Hello, this is Christy, and in today's episode of our Camtasia tutorial series, we will try something different. We will try to create a vignette effect. If you don't know what a vignette effect is, if you want to make the center of your image lighter and then the edge is darker, that's pretty much a vignette. So you can have a vignette around this picture here so the center is visible properly, but then the edges get darker and it kind of achieves a bit of a old style or vintage effect in Camtasia. So I'm going to show you how to do this today. I've imported a picture of a wall here with bricks. So you can see the lighting on this wall is the, the same across the entire surface. So what we will do is add a vignette effect around the edges like this. And funny enough, uh, in Camtasia, it's not easy to do this. I mean, not easy. It's not difficult either, but it's not something built in. So you have to kind of build it from a few elements if you want to do it. But the good news is you can then resize it and move it around and scale it and do stuff with the effect. And you can put any video behind it. Normally, in older versions of Camtasia, you couldn't do this, but in this version, 2020, um, they have added a bunch of features, and this particular one is easy to achieve, um, and I'm going to show you how to do it. So, we start off with this scene here, so I'm going to go and change the canvas size to be HD. When you import a new picture and drag it onto your scene, Camtasia changes the size of the canvas to match that that video clip or scene perfectly but actually it's not hd so i'm gonna i, I like to work with an hd screen ratio 16 by 9 and then i changed it so now my um, image is here so i'm gonna have to scale it up to fill my entire canvas it doesn't matter that's why i chose a texture like this um, Okay, so here we go. This is filling my entire canvas here. So we will add a vignette effect on top of this. So this will be visible. You can see it through and we will also be able to tweak it. So what we have to do actually is to go to annotations and go to shapes at the top and choose a black annotation here, a black shape and just drag it onto our scene. So what we will do is first, let's do the bottom part. So what we will do is actually we will compose our vignette from four different annotations like this. And each one is going to have a slightly different fill with a transparency on it so that we can achieve the effect so that the vignette fades out as you get closer to the center of your image. So this is not... Um, you would think that they built this into Camtasia, but they didn't. So let's see, how do we do it? We resize this shape and we'll position it in the corner here. So resize it, make it as wide as your screen like this. And now it is black. But what we want to do is we want to fill it with a gradient. And you can do this in Camtasia. If you look in the right side here, the rectangle shape that I have, it has a solid fill of black. So what we want to do is select gradient. As you do this though, the gradient has a direction of uh, vertical. So whichever way you, f you uh, move this object, the gradient always goes up. So this is fine for the bottom part. And we will see how we can change this. You can't, there's no control here in Camtasia to change the gradient. So as we have it here it's it's dark at the bottom and lighter at the top now this is we will have to tweak this a bit so the way we tweak it is we will make it taller so we can see the uh, gradient better and then we will apply you notice that the second color is actually white for the gradient right so we can't even um, control the gradient color here um, as we would like so it's white so what we need to do is go to visual effects and we will choose remove a color and drag this on the canvas on top of my uh, rectangle with the gradient and the color on the right side panel here is currently green now of course we don't have green in my rectangle we have white so what we want to do is drop this down click the color picker and choose the a part of this color at the top and click on it 
And as you can see, we've basically selected some sort of gray color, right? So now we told Camtasia to replace that color. I mean, to remove it, actually, not replace it with another color, but remove it. So we are removing that lighter gray. If we change the tolerance, you notice that the gradient kind of comes down and up depending on how much tolerance we add. So what we can do is try and see if we can choose a lighter color like a white and then bump up the tolerance so it doesn't work. So what we have to do is pick the color from the object. So we will, close, we will go as close as we can to the top not pick white because white doesn't work. Pick up this gray and then play with the tolerance. And also you can play with the softness. What the softness does is it will change the um, fade. It will change the fade here so it's not so abrupt. Okay, so we will do more. If you play with these other controls, you may be able to achieve other effects, but we won't do it. So. Another way to do this, I think, is if you don't want to mess around with this gray selection here, you can just go to the picker and choose black. And basically you're replacing the black color, but then you do invert. So that will achieve the same thing and it may actually give you a better result. In any way you want to do it, you notice that now the edge, you can adjust the edge softness with this control here and also you can adjust the tolerance so that you remove everything except the black color. In our case, the white because we clicked invert here. So the softness, you know, bump the softness up and then the tolerance allows you to adjust how much of the color to remove. In our case, we want zero tolerance because I want to remove everything else but the black. So you will see that because the gradient here is a gradient from black to whatever that gray was it will replace all of that and leave the black here because we said invert so what this gives us is a soft soft fade with this so this is kind of like a fake transparency if you want we created some sort of a transparency here now we can zoom out just uh, roll your mouse wheel backwards and we can actually scale this like that to give us more or less vignette that we want to have on the edges, right? So if you go too tall, then of course you're going to cover too much. So we want the black, the complete black to start at the bottom. And we don't care about the stuff that comes out of the frame. We don't care about that. That is, uh, you know, outside of our frame. It's not going to render in the final clip. So we don't worry about it. So if you, if you look now, let's deselect. You notice that my bottom area here is actually darkened as I approach the edge. If I turn this off, you notice the effect. Okay, so we have the bottom part. Now let's do the top. So what we will do is click on this shape and copy and paste. Control C, Control V. We've made a duplicate and we want to move this to the top. Now remember what I said, if you replace, if you rem uh, rotate your object, that's not going to help much because look, the gradient always seems to point up. So what we want to do is apply a transform to this object along the X axis and that's going to basically flip it. So what we want is from the rotation on the right, we rotate 180 degrees. So that basically rotates the object around the X axis which is the horizontal axis, 180 degrees, and that seems to push the gradient down instead of up. So again, with this one, we move it to the close to the edge of the uh, scene here, and there you go. We have our top and bottom vignette. Now, we want, of course, vignette on the right and on the left. Now, this may work or may not work. Let's copy again one of these. Uh, copy, let's, let's copy the bottom one. Control C, Control V, and let's move it. So this would be our left one. Again, if I try and rotate, it's not going to work because the gradient points upwards. So if I try a, a X transform of 90, that's not going to help because it's just going to squash the object. 
bring it down to no height at all so that's not going to work um, and if we try along the y-axis that's not going to work either and along the z-axis again that's not going to do anything because it's just going to flip it so what we need to do here is do not transform it at all what we want to do is we want to delete this <laughs> and what we want to do is select both of the other ones right so we select the bottom one hold down the shift key select the top one and group them so this is one trick that you can use in Camtasia with a lot of other stuff basically whatever happens whatever transforms whatever filters you apply to an object if you then group that object all of those transforms will be relative to the group not to your canvas what this means is if I try and rotate these objects to achieve the vertical vignette on the left and the right I won't be able to do it but if I group them and then rotate the group then I will be able to do it so let me show you I'm selecting the bottom one and the top one which I am quite happy with now maybe I need to move the top one a bit higher so I am quite happy with my vignette right now see bottom and top is very nice and I want to achieve the left and right so before I do that I want to select both of these and group them I don't select the actual wall the photo of the wall I don't select that I just select the two shapes and can group them you can right click and say group or press ctrl G right so let me just pull everything to make it wider like that and to keep things organized I'm gonna right, right click on this and rename it so we'll, let's just call it top and bottom okay so we know which ones they are and now I'm gonna copy this group control C control V and it's gonna put it on top of this one and this time rename this one left and right okay so this is the left and the right zoom out a little bit and you can you can basically see it here I can just use the transform controls here to transform along the Z Z axis you notice if I spin this around it's spinning my object but if I want to be accurate I'm just gonna type in here 90 degrees 90 enter and here you go my gradient now points left and right um, according to those two objects so all I have to do is just hold down the uh, hold down the control key and pull the left resize handle to resize my object until it reaches the edges and I'm happy with my vignette like this so as you can see here now my vignette is almost complete the only thing that I want to make sure is that my shape you see it adds a little bit of a sort of a white glow here and I believe that's because the tolerance or the softness on my um, on my uh, vignette here is too strong or maybe it's the D fringe I'm not sure you can play with these controls until you're happy and make sure you remove that white thing there and do the same here just to make it this will actually reduce your vignette a little bit but that's not that's too bad and then do the same on the top and the bottom one just reduce the softness a little bit it will it will add a little more light to your scene but if you really want to make it darker all you have to do is just open these groups and just resize the whole thing and if you want a smoother a smoother fade you just resize it and then pull it way down like that so you notice that my so my vignette is much softer now so I'm gonna just undo this real quick so I'm quite happy with my vignette now if I then select these both of these groups and group them again I can re-click right click and say rename and this is my vignette effect here and I can then move it wherever I want and because it's in a group I can actually scale it individually you know look at this separate and control mouse wheel scales it up and down keeps it centered to my scene so I can easily kind of adjust or I can pull the handles like this control key and you can pull the handles 
on your vignette. So you notice the difference now. Let me turn it off. So this is my wall without the vignette. This is my wall with the vignette. So the nice part of this is that you could have of course achieved the same effect by creating an image in another program such as Photoshop or uh, maybe Zara or some other photo editing software. You create some fades, you create a rectangle like this and you export it as a PNG. But that is going to be a bitmap with alpha, fine, with alpha, with transparency so you can lay it on top of whatever you're seeing. But that will be actually kind of a fixed bitmap. But this one is flexible. So this effect here, you can actually animate this. You know, if you want to make the vignette kind of come in, you can go to animations and you just go to animations here, drag a custom animation on this, make it as long as you like. And then on the start of the animation, you can actually scale this up. So now look at this. The vignette is, well, maybe I made it too long. So my vignette is now actually animating in. There you go. The edges are getting darker and I have an animated vignette. And you can do all sorts of animations, fade it in, fade it out, whatever you want to do. Um, this is because it's native, it's inside of Camtasia. You don't depend on other elements. And let's say that you decide to change the canvas. You, you want to change the size of a canvas. Let me just delete this animation here. So if you want to change the size of a canvas, uh, maybe you, you want to use uh, or add this vignette to your library so you can reuse it in other projects. You can just go to your uh, size here and say your project settings and let's choose maybe uh, an Instagram sort of shape, square shape scene, right? Like this. So this is now my project uh, canvas. If I just want to reuse the same vignette, all I have to do is hold down the control key, resize it like that, and then resize this edge without the control key. And you can use the shift key to just resize along one edge like that. So there you go. I've resized my vignette without having to create it again, without having to go to another software to create another transparent PNG and do my vignette. So I hope this tutorial was uh, nice, interesting, useful for you. And if you like my uh, tutorials, please subscribe to my channel. And, uh, you know, I have a lot of other videos, other tutorials for Camtasia, Premiere, Photoshop, Zara, and other graphic design and marketing. So, um, yes, thank you for watching. See you next time.